assault and do violence surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always Ultra Thins reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slow Burn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge, it's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place. A space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'm going to do the dab, yeah. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never, ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, cool. The all-new Buick Envision, an SUV built around you, all of you. Q Time is a classic Atlanta soul food restaurant located in the historic West End. Q Time Soul Food is a family business started by Fred and Christine Crenshaw. Come on in, relax, and sink your chops into our tantalizing, mouth-watering, distinctive soul food with a twist, the Q Time way. 1120 Ralph David Abernathy Boulevard, or call your order in at 404-758-2881. Do you miss your mama's cooking? Then come on down to Q Time, an Urban Passport member. 
Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Yeah. I love my HBCU And boy, I love it, love it I love it, love it I love my HBCU And man, I hope my team they won one I hope my team they won one Yeah, man I hope my team they won one I hope my team they won one Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, because he going to teach us. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. As you see, Mike Washington is still out on assignment, but we have none other than Charles Bishop. Uh, I think his bags are packed. <laughs> they stay packed during this time of year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's ready to get. It looks sound like some of these folks talking about getting back to the scene of the crime. I don't, I don't know what's all that about. But you know, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> Welcome to episode 3014 of the Inside HBC Sports Lab Radio Show and Podcast. The show is covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBC sports, but institutions large and small, from the NEIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and the HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic program and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. We're filming from our home studios and sending a signal live, KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Famer, multi-Hall of Famer Ralph Cooper in a beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency. THG Agency, a company that provides sporting and educational and consulting and data analytics. You know, in the second half of the show, Charles, we'll get into some of these big matchups, but I just can't help the kind of touch on it as we get in the news of the day. This is a huge, I mean, big time HBCU weekend, but SWAT yeah. weekend in terms of just for the culture. The sporting yeah. HBCU diaspora, you know, the SWAC with obviously a full game of slate of games for the entire conference. All but two of them are conference matchups. Mm. But even the two, you know, non-conference matchups are featuring uh, HBCU blue blood programs. Yeah. Programs that many people have talked about in terms of uh, the expansion of SWAC, and not even on this last iteration. That's probably where it really got loud, um, particularly for one of the matchups with FAMU and South Carolina State in terms of South Carolina. But previous to that for years, you know, there's been talk about Tennessee State uh, mm -hmm. with this matchup, and it happens to be with one of the newer expansion members of the conference for their homecoming. Yeah. So that's just um, intriguing to me. So I just wanted to get your general thoughts on this because – in a lot of ways, being um, one of the child of the SWAC, you know, children yeah. of the SWAC, if you would, mm -hmm. for more people outside of that, that grew in uh, the hot bit of the SWAC, blue blood of the SWAC. Um, so all you know is that. Talk mm -hmm. about what are the general thoughts when you saw this schedule, you know. Uh, for me, it, it came out, you know, in the SWAC and – Obviously, you're looking for key matchups, homecoming opponents, you know, some key conference games that came into you that thought would be big, potential big matchups, you know, starting with the Labor Day Classic, whether it's Prairie View, Texas Southern as a conference game, and obviously now with 
Jackson State and FAMU. That, you know, that's pretty obvious. Mm-hmm. Then you get some of those rivalry matchups, right? The big time classics, State Fair Classic that we just got through this weekend with Prairie View and Grambling, you know, in Dallas, Texas, State Fair. Um, you have obviously um, the classic, Magic City Classic with Alabama AM and Alabama State. Then you get into Thanksgiving weekend with the Turkey Day Classic mm-hmm. uh, with Alabama State non conference member uh, Tuskegee. Uh, obviously, you get in the Bayou Classic uh, with Southern and Grambling. And now you get the SWAT Classic or the Florida Classic with FAMU and Bethune Cookman. Mm-hmm. And since I threw in uh, Tuskegee, you might as well talk about the big classic with Southern Heritage Classic with Jackson State and Tennessee State. And now we see Tennessee State in another uh, big time game, even if it's nothing but their homecoming. Mm-hmm. When you think about all that, those rivalry games, why does this weekend, week eight, with these feature matchups, why does it get you excited? As we kind of talked off before we came into this, I mean, there, there's and there's a lot of excitement uh, from the uh, the engagement standpoint of the fan base, and I think that's what makes this weekend so much fun. I've been reading about watch parties. Uh, with Southern in in, in Dallas, uh, in, in Atlanta. Same thing with Jackson State uh, with watch parties in Houston, Dallas, Atlanta, Washington, D.C. Uh, the the I fan engagement. D.C. too. I yeah. was like, D.C., <laughs> Chicago, L.A. I yeah, like, okay. yeah. Okay. Like the fan engagement level is, I think, uh, different, uh, especially this weekend as we start getting in the homecoming season. And then you have these huge matchups. You, you have uh, – this Swat West matchup that everybody's going to have an eye out for uh, with regards to Southern and Prairie View. Uh, and then you have Jackson State going to Montgomery this weekend. And then with social media, Doc, the smack talk has been off the meter this week uh, for whatever reason. I mean, people are – juices are flowing, and that's what makes it so much fun when you get a weekend like this weekend where uh, you get some matchups that, you know, quite honestly – you know, it's going to be some fan bases sick and out on the ledge uh, come Sunday morning. Uh, it might be basketball early, basketball season early for a couple of fan bases. You just – you don't know. So I, I think that's what makes this thing so much fun this weekend. And when I saw it uh, back at Swag Media Day, I started, you know, kind of thinking where would teams be around, you know, this time of the year. And things are kind of, you know, panning out kind of ha- as you envision them. So that level – that ratchets it up even more. So I'm looking forward to it this weekend. Yeah, you, you've heard the uh, comments out there about uh, homecoming, Alabama State, Jackson State being sold out. You can see that, but I, you know, or at least tickets are on the resale market. When well, you start mm-hmm. to even hear that with Prairie View and Southern now, wow, uh, <laughs> know what's going on or how accurate that is. But I mean, you know, the fact that it could even be a part of the consideration is big. But um, I want to get back and do a little bit of, you know, fans on the ledge. You know, we had that segment last year, and you brought it back. And I think it may be appropriate time to bring it back. I know we kind of let Southern skip a little bit when they were on the ledge. uh, But now (laughs) we have a chance. So let's take a quick break, tease that out a little bit, come back on the other side. We'll have another one of our co-hosts in here uh, with 1876 Sports and Culture. We'll bring him in appropriately. And then we might touch on a little bit of news before we get into uh, the marching sport. But I want to get your – side of in the lab because when Mike gets back, we're going to test him to see if he still has his tailgating experience because, you know, he's been traveling, so now we can talk about some of his tailgate culture. Maybe he can bring something back to the table. With that, let's take our first quick break. We'll come back on the other side, tease out a little bit, uh, bring uh, in a co-host of the show, uh, and then we'll get into uh, the marching sport uh, into our next break. So this is a quick timeout. We'll be right back on the other side. This is Ryan Fulford. A.D. Drew and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. 
Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College, where we prepare you for a different world. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot left. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lot. This is Dr. Gaville inside HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and Alan Williams. Professor Williams, back for another adjunct edition, man. The money must be good to you. You like a little adjunct position. <laughs> hey, man, I got to get in where I fit in, man. I'm liking this. Mike better be careful. <laughs> I let him know. I let him know. We had to call that quick timeout. We're still in the first quarter, as people know, but we call the timeout. Uh, this is a teaser to Joshua Sims. You know, he talked about the fact that maybe North Carolina Central with that hot up tempo that they might have should have called a timeout in their first quarter before it got away before half. But you know, it is what it is. We're just saying great spaces that he did yesterday on there. But as you are uh, getting into it, Charles, and your hands, you know, we tugged out and, and there were some, you know, fans on the ledge that you wanted to talk about a little bit. And, uh, who you got in mind? Well, uh, we'll start off with the first fan base that I saw jump out on the ledge quick, and that that, that fan base jumped out there when that G came off the helmet. So, Bramlin fans, that they definitely have been on the ledge for a couple of weeks now, especially after that State Fair Classic. They are really questioning uh, Hugh Jackson's uh, method to the madness, if you will, in year one. So, uh, we definitely got the Grammar fans. They out there <laughs> – uh, ain't no soft spot landing out there because they got some tough games coming up, but – Here's another fan base. They're definitely out there on the ledge, and this happened last week. Lane put those Tennessee State Tigers uh, fan base definitely out there on the ledge, and now they got Bethune Cookman here for homecoming. Ooh, year two, Eddie George. Yeah, boy, they they need a win bad this weekend. Oh, they need a win bad. And then you know who's <laughs> oh, go ahead. Who, who who you gonna say? Last, last fan. Last fan base, this could be a, a ledge weekend. It could be basketball season early if Southern doesn't get this win in Prairie View this weekend. <laughs> he he going to put Southern on the ledge. Uh, oh, man. they was on the I ledge. Think after, says it's make over. no mistake, they were on the ledge after Texas Southern, but they came back in. Impressive <laughs> performance against UAPB, but but you know Southern Jag fan now. They will. They going to let you know. If, if, if something go wrong this weekend, oh, they're going to question. I got three programs on the ledge. I want to see what Alan thinks of my three programs on the ledge. I got Pine Bluff. I think you were telling them to put their basketball jersey on last week. Yeah, yeah, they jumped. So yeah. I put them on the ledge. He said they jumped. They yeah, yeah. Uh, no folk out of no folk stayed out of the BA. I see them on the ledge. And then they got Morgan State this year. They they lose yeah. Morgan State. They go be ready to jump. I'm gonna go to Division Two route. Stephen Gaither, mess with him. I'm even put out Tyler Carr. <laughs> He's good about it though. <laughs> Uh, with Winston Salem State, I mean, he, they on the ledge. And anytime you cancel homecoming, uh, yeah. it wasn't fair to him on that. And then you had this rough start. It just the world's not going right for you. So on the ledge, what do you think about all those teams between Charles and I that we put on the ledge? You agree with us? Anyone you want to add? Take off? Okay, I, 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 I'm gonna see your rambling because I don't give them the G no more. It's just rambling at this point. See, see, see. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So, so I'm going to see your rambling, and I'm going to add to that list Coach Maynard over there in Alabama A&M. There were some big expectations coming into this season at Alabama A&M. And, uh, you know, you got – you got who, who's, who needs that win more? Is it Gramlin with Hugh in his first year, or is it Maynard? I, I venture to say that Maynard's seat is a little warm right now, and he might need a little more than, than Hugh does because Hugh was in that first-year honeymoon suite. So if he loses out, he can say, these are my players, and he can, you know, pull a Jackson State and cut the whole team next year. I don't know if they're going to keep the same energy that they had with the volleyball coach, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, that spring, that spring oh. championship was a long time ago, man. <laughs> Y'all to put all these folks on the ledge. It's not even midterm reports yet, man. It's just we just a week five checking reports. <laughs> Great, make sure grades in. And y'all put folks on the ledge. It's deep out there. 
Uh, only thing I have before we go to this break, uh, Duke Mayo Classic had a big economic impact uh, with an attendance of 35,798. The event was estimated uh, Charlotte Regional Visitor Authority to generate 14.6 uh, million in economic impact for Charlotte region, including 7.9 million in direct visitor spending with 20,476 visitors to the Charlotte region. Big time impact, I know in addition, to the economic impact, over 300,000 in donation grants and scholarships were generated by the game. Uh, significant in terms of what that looks like. Uh, obviously, with this discussion in terms of the financial situation of HBCUs, playing in classics, uh, in terms of what that looks like, uh, it's going to be fascinating to continue to follow as people get a little more interested in the economic numbers in terms of what their teams generate, as well as what their teams earn, and what does that look like when you compare it uh, to different programs, whether that's uh, BCS and you're comparing it with similar attendance numbers, which obviously is different when you talk about the divisional classification, or if you talk about other historically white colleges in the same classification, what does that look like, um, and or just other events in general. So it's gonna be fascinating because I think now people have kind of touched on it and have an interest. So I'm fascinated to kind of see what that looks like. With that being said, let's take our first break. Novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Them belly full, but we hungry. Mango's Caribbean uh -huh. Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. So we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. Nope. Nope. Come on, him. Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love ya, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and Alan Williams coming in. We're going to get into the marching sport. Not a lot of changes this weekend, but we did have a matchup head-to-head -head in terms of the State Fair Classic that we kind of teased out uh, early in terms of the football game, but we had that in terms of on the field. So we'll see what that does to the top ten. Let's get into it as we break down those teams that – Bands, if you would, uh, as we call it, marching sports. So those teams, as they get into it in terms of those dropping out, nobody dropped out of the polls this week. Receiving votes as we get into it are Texas Southern Ocean of Soul. 0-2 on the season, but they've had some tough matchups, close matchup, particularly that one with Prairie View and Southern uh, were close. So 0-2, not only in terms of overall and the conference race, Everwaters marching band, 
one and zero, but haven't really uh, got into big time matchups a couple of times since then. All the state marching Rams, one and one on the season, big victory last week. Getting into the action, let's get into the top ten programs, starting with number ten, North Carolina A and T, the blue and gold marching machine, one and one. Uh, as they were previously ranked nine, they dropped to uh, number ten as they took an L. Uh, not participated last week, and he had some teams jumping in. And number nine, you have Tennessee State, the aristocrat of bands, 0-1 uh, in terms of what they've looked like this season. Um, still strong performances, but couldn't quite get it done. Unfortunately, they won't get a matchup this weekend with Bethune Cookman, and I'm sure mm -hmm. they're going to continue to fall. They have a chance. It's hard to go at them as much as possible because of Hurricane Ian, but the fact is they were not going to make the trip prior to that. Uh, but certainly understand now the challenges and they have more important issues to deal with. Mm -hmm. Bringing us to number eight, you got Alcorn State. The sounds of dynamite, one and two in terms Ooh. of one and one over on that matchup. Had a big matchup a couple of weeks ago against Pine Bluff. Really got down in that. They got it done, one and two in terms of what goes on. They came in on two, had the one. They had a close one. I know Charles was looking at some of those matchups, but uh, I guess it was who they were up against because they came out of it week. It came to the National Battle of the Bands and that weekend couldn't get in the top uh, four. Um, so that hurt them in terms of just the competition was there. Mm -hmm. uh, bringing us to number seven, Florida a and marching 100, one and one. Uh, all these friendly matchup, friendly fires. You see what's <laughs> going on when you start marching with these folks. Now they over there getting your homecoming. <laughs> <G -ho. laughs> uh, well, we got to tell y'all. Now they got to march with it. USC, keep on sharing with you. You're going to lose everything, and you can't hide it. But that's that's all right. You don't listen to us. Let's get into number six, North Carolina Central, the Sound Machine Marching Band, 2 and all on the season uh, in terms of their matchups. Taking out A&T, that's where A&T had one of their losses in that classic mm -hmm. that started things off. The other one was against Winston-Salem State at home. They got that done. Uh, but now it's time to see uh, going on. They tend to try to hit the road when you talk about MEAC because you don't see a lot of matchups. They do their part in some ways. But let's get into the top five as we continue to march down that way. You won't see major changes this, this time, but be interesting this week. Is Southern coming to Prairie View with, uh, with their team? Interesting uh -huh. in that matchup. Could be one there. Uh, they tend to make that trip, uh, and they make a lot of trips with their team to give them full credit. But that play should be electric atmosphere. So that means you got a top 10 matchup on the football side. Think about mm. this. Guys. You got a top five matchup on the marching sports side. You talking about being electric. Bring us to number four, which is Alabama State, the mighty marching Hornets, 2-0, mm -hmm. one, uh, fourth place. They have a matchup. It's the Sonic Boom. Making it, I saw a video that made it sound like they're talking about Sweet Home Alabama. Are they making the trip, Charles? Of uh, of course, of Ooh, course. So that means they never they, never turn down a challenge. Yeah, the marching Wildcats. They're not mark, making the trip. I think they're going to fall. Not large, like I said. Some of that is not directly theirs. But number two, you have Southern Human Jukebox two and oh, two first place votes, seventy nine points. They have a top five matchup, so you'll get some changes next week, one way or the mm. other. Somebody's coming out of that top five more than likely. And then at number one, uh, at two, it was Southern Prairie View. As they dropped out at number one, you have Jackson State. So that gives you the top five matchup. So you got mm. two top five matchups, Prairie View mm. and Southern, and you got Alabama State and Jackson State. Mm. Book ending the conference East and West. So we mm. talked about the number of conference games that makes this a big weekend for the SWAT. But you got perennial band matchups to go with. Top 10 matchups uh, between the football side of the thing and the basketball. It doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. You talking about for the culture, the sporting HBCU diaspora is in effect. Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of the top 10 matchups? But even more importantly, these perennial top five matchups, football side and marching band side. This is what you want. This is you want these heavyweight band matchups. Uh, Sonic Boom and 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 Alabama State's band going at it this weekend. Here's a here's a little nuance that I'm looking for this weekend, Doctor Bill. Who is the band that provides that 12th man? Provides that extra juice? 
Uh, is your band playing random challenges, you know, during the course of play, or are they involved on it on third downs? Are they giving a team the extra juice? Are they giving a fan base the extra juice, you know, that 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 propels a team? That's the sort of stuff that I'm looking for this weekend because nobody wants to hear a tenor drum uh, challenge for about 20 minutes. That's just ridiculous to me. <laughs> I like that, Alan. <laughs> yeah, what are yeah. your thoughts? I, I agree challenge, there. And challenge. I, I'm just saying, man, it's gonna be tight. Alabama State gonna have to the honeybees gonna have to do some death drops or something, man. <laughs> <laughs> we need the honeybees. They they need to they need to bump for the, the drum majors. I saw the last time I saw Alabama State, the honeybees did a flip over the drum majors' knees. And it was something to see, man. So I don't know. Sonic Boom might be in trouble this weekend. Plus it's homecoming. We'll see. Now you got the, the jukebox and PV. Oh, now, it, it's all going to come down to song selection for me. It's all about the song selection. If you are playing the wrong songs and, you know, you had a crowd looking at you like, come on, Dr. Lee, with the flight of the bumblebee, we're going to have a problem. PV, I want to hear Swamp in the first quarter. I want to hear Swamp in the second quarter. I want to hear it twice in the third quarter. And I want to hear it again in the fourth quarter. There's no excuse not to play your hype song. We know what Southern is going to do. Southern play has the same show every time. We know what they're going to do. So it, this is our house now. It's ours to lose. We want to win zero quarter, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth quarter. I want to sweep. <laughs> he wants zero quarter, first quarter, second quarter, uh... quarter third quarter. Fourth quarter and the fifth quarter. <laughs> yeah, now you talking about sweet? That's big time. I like that. That's the attitude you come with. Mm. It should be fascinating this weekend as it gets good. Let's take a halftime break talking about marching sport to get in the bands. We're gonna have to get some uh, halftime hype. I'm sure. I'm surprised Roy ain't snuck in the uh, family 100 during our halftime shows, you know, but he'd probably be in good spirit about things. But let's get into our first halftime break. We'll come back on the other side. We'll start getting into these matchups. We're going to get into some mid-major matchups, and then we're going to take a deep dive in this Saturday for major division with a heavy, heavy look at the SWAT. 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service with Slow Burn. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. It's more than a mobile lounge, it's an environment and an experience rich in history, luxury, and personality. An elegant extension of any celebration occasion. It's the perfect escape and meeting place. A space where you can relax or enjoy a shared passion. Have Slow Burn plan your next big event or before you are planning to celebrate your win over your athletic rival, you can shop our collections at www.slowburnwaco.com. But if they want to tap, uh, I'm going to do the dab, yeah. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah. 
This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is out on assignment, but we have none other than Alan William of 1876 Sports and Culture and Podcast. I see y'all growing up big. Interviews on the sideline, on the field with Joe Clay. Shout out Joe Clay on the field after the game with the State Fair class. Uh, Charles Bishop, man, the pregame show, man, y'all done, y'all done reached out some folks. Folks trying, trying to put on the leg, say they want to come with you and play a little bit. That's 1876 dope. That's dope. is in for it. They're going to do some pregame coaches at Prairie View. They all for it. They said, come on with it. Retweeting everything. So should be interesting. We need more swag schools and coaches to come along with us and, and join the group. We certainly got space over here with Roy in terms of the Black College Sports Network for those that want to join the fold and support the institution with shows. We'll show you the legwork and all that goes. But let's get into some of these big, major matchups. Uh, in terms of what's going on this week. Uh, got a big one in terms of uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Morehouse, the Skiggy Classic. I know we touched on this a little bit uh, this past weekend, uh, but I want to get into a big one uh, where you get into the CIAA game of the week. Dr. Henry Frazier III is what I call him. Yeah, everybody else call him Coach Frazier. It's his, it's homecoming for Virginia State, as they will be hosting his alma mater, the Bulldogs, CIAA, oh. that just ran through the North uh, all these years, struggling a bit this year. Oh. But they're still, this is a top 10 matchup. Number eight, Bowie State Bulldogs, three and two, two and one in the conference race. At number six, Virginia State Trojans, four and one, three and oh. Obviously, they can't look too far ahead, but they had a big rival with Virginia Union. This just dominated everybody. They're our number one ranked team, but if they want to make that game mean something, they got to bury, in a lot of ways, the Bulldogs. And you think the Bulldogs are not going to go out easy, but this is Saturday, October uh, 8th matchup, 3 o'clock. PRC Communications is picking up this homecoming game uh, for Virginia in Rogers Stadium. Charles, what are your thoughts on this top 10 matchup? Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. You know what we do. We like to talk about matchups that count as much as possible. And this is CIAA matchup, but top 10. Yeah, this is tough. This is tough. Uh, is Will the, the Bowie State uh, dominance finally come to an end after this mm-hmm. weekend of the CIAA North? Uh, Virginia Union has already made their case uh, in terms of having that big right hand up there in the Northern Division. But Virginia State is right they are nipping on their heels. And we've ca- almost kind of forgotten about Bowie State. But this is a, a question for me this weekend. Uh, can Virginia State run the football? And, and they have a, a, a really, really, really nice uh, running back, Darius Hagens. A uh, huge game this past weekend for them. Uh, I think for homecoming, I got to go with Dr. Henry Frazier. I think they're going to get it done this weekend. I think Bowie State falls, and there will be a new champion representing the North for the 2022 season. Before I go to you, Alan, I just want to say, uh, Joe Clay gave you a shout out as he had his on-field interview. I shared it with everybody. You know, I love to see people do things, but he said, got to watch a few more Charles interviews to make sure he's ready. <laughs> I said, all right. There you go. Alan, what are your thoughts in terms of this top 10 matchup? As I said, it's the Bulldogs and Trojan. You know, Coach Frazier, Dr. Henry Frazier the third. What you I think mean, he gonna do? He gonna beat up his alma mater? Man, all I want to know is when you're going through the schedule and you're trying to decide which game is gonna be homecoming. How do you select this game to be homecoming? That's either you got you know some serious confidence in your squad, or I I don't know, man, but I don't know if I would have made this homecoming, but I, I'm still going with with, with, with Coach Frazier here. Uh, I think Virginia State's going to go away with this one, and uh, uh, we will see a new king in the CIAA this year. I'm just thinking a little bit about when you said that, you know, you're talking about the HBCU shout-out with those got my cup there because I'm ready on uh, getting into it. But there's this Coach Prime up in Mississippi area and he seems to have a thing about the two in terms of Montgomery, hey. Alabama. Something about the homecoming. I'm checking my wallet. That, I, that, that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> Ain't no way. Ain't no way, boy. I do, like I do want to set the record straight. And 
this is where there might need to be a little more organization with the university and the athletic department. Uh, just so people know this, uh, I think it's important for people to take co – coaches, first of all, generally speaking, unless you're extremely big time, they don't make the schedule. Right. The athletic directors, VP of athletics, they tend to make the schedule in terms of non-conference matchups, contracts they get. They work with the SWAC office in terms of scheduling. There's some parameters in there. And for the most part, the conference does most of the schedule. But it is the university. Lay me student services with some support maybe from the president's office. And if there is a big-time university, they will might check a little bit with the SWAC, I mean, the athletic department. But for the most part, Student service is right. Academic affairs, they tend to decide when homecoming needs. And, you know, they have no clue on athletics. They don't know big time programs. They don't understand who you bring in. They just like, this is the date we want. And as you know, homecomings tend to be the same date. It may move back a week or two based on the fact that they don't have a home date, the general time frame. But it's usually the same period. If it's the first weekend in October, that's when it's going to happen. If it's the third week in October, that's when it's happening. Who's ever on the schedule, it's just happened to be that time. So I did want to get that on the table uh, before we go further, just so people understand proper HBCU etiquette, if you would, the sporting uh, HBCU dash, what's out there. With that being said, y'all might be, need to be careful for your coaches of who they – Schedule. <laughs> Got to be more careful. <laughs> Got to be more careful. Kentucky State Thoroughbreds 0 and 4, 0 and 1 at number nine, Lane Dragon, 3 and 2 and 2 and 0. For uh, this game here is big time. It's at home for Lane Dragons. Uh, SIAC West Division game. I had to give Lane a little bit of love. They are top 10 for the first time, right? They got the big win last week. I know Kentucky State is 0 and 4. Tricky team. They're trying to figure things out. Sticking with you. Alan, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Big time Lane Dragon. Shout out to them getting a big win W last week against Tennessee State on the road. Man, I put a whole check on Lane this week. There's no way in the world. <laughs> no way in the world. <laughs> Charles, let me go to you. You know, that's the first time Lane ever beat Tennessee State, but yeah. nine, nine, ten attempts uh, in terms of that. First time ever we put our stamp on that. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? Yeah, I, I think that that win over Tennessee State, that's going to carry a lot of momentum for the rest of the season for Lane. I, I think uh, Kentucky State will get a healthy dosage of Ike Brown this weekend. And I, I got Lane in a runway in this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With that being said, let's go to our last break. We'll come back. We'll go into a major division. We'll take deep dives. Usually we give you two. We might sneak out three games. We'll give you a couple of them this time. We're going to go in there and really give you some matchups because the SWAC is where it's at in a lot of ways in terms of just the number of games. We do have a solid mm. game in terms of me because it's the first conference game of the year, so that's always big, and it features an upstart in terms of the Morgan State Bears and a program that's struggling a little bit in terms of Norfolk State. We'll go inside that a little bit, but stick with us as we get into the fourth quarter, and we'll give you the latest and greatest on some key matchups this weekend. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not no. working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology.
credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, boy. Cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah, do uh, Dr. Holmes just said. Yeah, this is uh, Dr. DeVille with Inside HBC Sports Lab. Like I said, we're going to get in these matchups. So I'm going to show you some hypotheticals when we look at it and just what's going on in this matchup and why I call it hypotheticals. Before I do that, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Hong, Department of Mathematics. As an academician, he'll tell you another part of it that I didn't think of, which shame on me, uh, the dean of HBC Sports, uh, not even putting this out there. You also got to remember you got midterms. Midterms mm -hmm. dictates a lot, and that's why I said the academic affairs office. You never want homecoming, obviously, doing midterms. You're going to flunk out half your student population if you do that. So, um, and midterms are essentially halfway through the semester. Most semesters are 16 weeks, um, so eight weeks. You'll see them slide sometimes maybe week seven or week nine, but it needs to be pretty much halfway through the semester if you're going to get why you call it, quote, unquote, midterms, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so midterms plays a lot of side of the two. So those are things that you got to consider a little bit. But with that said, mm -hmm. this just means everybody needs to talk. Everybody needs to talk. Communication rules the world. Let's get into some of these other big time matchups this week as we get into it. If we could, let's let's drop those schedules when we talk about the hypothetical SWAC expansion. When you talk about this weekend, the reason I was saying it's so big, you have seven games uh, of those seven games, five of them, five of them, Charles, five of them are SWAC contests that are counting mm. in the race. Two of them are non-conference matchups. One is FAMU against South Carolina State. Uh, the other one is Bethune-Cookman at Tennessee State. Obviously, I told you about the expansion talk, so I just want to get a little hypothetical. If this was, right, all SWAC matchups, it would change in terms of East and West. In this case, you would have South Carolina State and Tennessee State in the East, which mm. means you slide Mississippi Valley State over. Could be Jackson, mm. but probably Mississippi Valley over, right? Uh, and so now that Ooh. all core Mississippi Valley matchup becomes a West Division matchup, so it's even more important this weekend. Now you think about Tennessee State and Bethune-Cookman. They'd be 0-1. They might have played another swag. Let's say they're 1-1 and 1 coming in this matchup. Now, all of a sudden, that Bethune-Cookman matchup in the East becomes even more important in terms of what it is for the schedule. You got FAMU, South Carolina State. South Carolina State beat Bethune-Cookman. But all of a sudden, now, this FAMU matchup after they lost to Jackson State, this matchup becomes even more critical, and it's an Eastern Division matchup. So that's why I said when you just talk about this, generally it's a big weekend, but it tickles you even more when you talk about what does this mean for Western Division. So go ahead, Charles. I see well, you smiling. What do you think about it? Well, I thought about it. It's like, well, well, who do you move over to the West? Because the matchups become really juicy. If you move Jackson State over to the West, now Alcorn, Southern, Grambling, Texas of the Prairie are fighting out of the West. So if you leave them in the East – you know, they got some history with South Carolina State. You know, uh, Big Daddy Carson was over at South Carolina State, uh, and he was head coach at Jackson State. Then you have the matchup with FAM and, and Alabama State. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's so intriguing to me in terms of who gets to bump over to the West. Uh, I'll speak Aldi, for the West. What are your thoughts? I'll speak for the West delegation, and we will, we will select Mississippi <laughs> Valley for the Western Division. <laughs> So let's bring up slide two. We're going to bring slide two that makes this even more interesting when we talk about the academic side of the house, if you would. This is credit to Dr. Holmes as well, because he knows about this. When you talk about R2, these are R2. There are 11 R2 institutions, HBCUs, which is uh, uh, the second highest ranking you get as an academic, which is R1, 
according to the Carnegie classification, right? Uh, there are several HBCUs, about four or five of them on the hand of them, that are really pushing the envelope to get to what you call it critical economic mass of uh, different type of grants and grant money such that they can move to R1 status. But when you look at this in terms of the R2 status, those 11 institutions include, uh, when you talk about it in different ways, fascinating, uh, pull it up real quick in terms of, they include Clark Atlanta University, Florida a and Howard University, Jackson State, Morgan State, North Carolina a and Prairie View a and Southern University, Tennessee State, Texas Southern University, and University of Maryland Eastern Shore. So that's what that MEAC matchup features a R2 institution in Morgan State. Uh, and so go to the next slide where it gets a little more interesting. Um, this is where I did a little flip, right? Now all of a sudden you bring in, instead of South Carolina State, get in the Atlanta market, you get a Clark Atlanta. Now you bring in an R2, 14 institutions, seven of them are R2 institutions, and you still have critical matchups. Now you got a fan you going into Atlanta for this weekend uh, for a matchup instead of Orangeburg. Uh, think about how that plays out when you start thinking about what that looks like in terms of the interest. Obviously, you had the game last week in Houston, the interest you get in terms of that market or when Southern comes in, Jackson comes into Houston, you're already talking about a hearing about a sellout. Imagine the same type of reflection after you have the State Fair Classic in Dallas, you have these backup. Now, all of a sudden, you get a conference matchup of four or five games in Atlanta. Uh, featuring Clark Atlanta University. That's where I was talking about in terms of understanding what it looks like when you get into it. But let's get in some of these key matchups um, before we get too far with this. When you talk about those other key matchups big time, you tease this out a little bit, but let's get into it with FAMU at South Carolina State. Starting with you, Alan, what are your thoughts in terms of FAMU going into South Carolina State. South Carolina struggled a little bit. The long victory is against Bethune Cookman, another Florida school. Can you make it two? Can you sweep Florida? Get right against the Rattlers, or will Rattlers continue uh, winning the last couple of games? They beat them up at home last year, and then back in 2019, they got it done in Orangeburg. What are your thoughts in terms of this matchup, Alan? If I'm fam you, I am nervous about this weekend. South Carolina State is one of those teams that you can never really fully grasp the pulse of that team. They are going to hit. They are going to, to be very aggressive, whether they are uh, in first place or in last place. So they are a scary team no matter what. And then you going into South Carolina on that, if I'm fam you, I am extremely nervous. Uh, this could be a repeat of the uh, Orange Blossom Classic if they're not careful because uh, Coach Buddy, he he might be down for a minute, but he ain't staying down. We all know yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. You, that's what makes this so intriguing to me, that you know um, Buddy Q knows this game is extremely important to the confidence of his team. I think he believes that he can't necessarily get away what he did last year. He wants his team to get right. He wants Corey Field, the quarterback, to start playing well. They yeah. played a little bit of the backup. How quick does he go to him in terms of how fast family gets all? Charles, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup? I think it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, Corey Fields has to play uh, much better. It has to be more consistent uh, in terms of his quarterback play for South Carolina State. Question for me in this game, can South Carolina, South Carolina State's pass rush, can they get to Jeremy Moosa? Uh, when he's upright, he'll pick you apart. But when you get a little bit of pressure on him, uh, that's where I, I think uh, – uh, that, that kind of breaks down that FAMU offense. They really haven't run the ball uh, like I thought they would be able to run the ball thus far this year. Uh, so I think a, a lot of uh, their offense hinges on the uh, whether you keep Jeremy Musa upright. So I, I think South Carolina State, uh, they know their backs up against the wall. They need to come out and get this W this weekend, playing at home. I think South Carolina State gets the win. I'm going to stay with you, Charles. I'm going to stay also in the MEAC when we talked about that matchup. I want to stay in the MEAC for their first conference game. You have Norfolk State uh, that has not won a game this year. Obviously, they're going into Morgan State. It's Morgan State's homecoming. Uh, they've been playing pretty well. Uh, Norfolk State is 0-5. Morgan State is 2-2. Two two. This game will be on ESPN at 12 o'clock. 
uh, as they do homecoming early on the East Coast up there. Uh, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup between Norfolk State and Morgan State? Uh, is Morgan State ready for the bright lights? Because I think, you know, th th this is that weekend where uh, everybody's going to kind of turn their attention to Morgan State. I was talking to a couple of analysts at Jackson State today, and, you know, the big thing with homecomings is keeping the distractions away, especially when you have a dangerous team that hasn't won a game and they have nothing to lose. I think that's going to be uh, something that you kind of want to keep in mind. Uh but I got to go with Morgan State. I, I think Damon Wilson is on to something over there. I uh, talked to a couple of uh, uh, alumni up there in the Baltimore area, and they're excited about what Morgan State is starting to do. Mark Gray, now he's really excited about what Morgan State is doing. So uh, I think they get the win on homecoming. They keep Norfolk State defeated. Yeah, you talk about Morgan, Mark Gray, Morgan State, man. He's been licking his chop for a team like this. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, he's going to be in rare form for homecoming. Shout out to Mark Gray. With that, you know, although Norfolk State is coming in 0-5, Allen, when you think about this, they played Sacred Heart last week. For a half, mm -hmm. they were right with them. They yeah. went punch for punch. Sacred Heart scored a touchdown. Norfolk scored a touchdown. Sacred Heart scored their second touchdown. Norfolk answered it. Uh, right before half, they kicked the field goal and couldn't get it done in the second half, so they did lose 31-14. But for half, it sounded like they started finding some things. Are they going to be able to take the next step this weekend or are the Bears, uh, as the old Chicago folks in that region that you're used to, obviously, talking about the Bears, are they going to get it right this week? Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be tough for Norfolk State to go up into Baltimore and uh, or Baltimore, as they say it up there, to, to, to really go in there and get a dub. <laughs> I think Odoms is going to be 0-6. And uh, I think he's going to be calling over to Jag Nation after this this weekend and see if he can come back home because oh! it's not looking good for no Norfolk State this year, man. And uh, I don't know if, if Pastor Dooley is not going to get his thing done in PV. They they might be uh, welcome, welcoming Coach Odoms back here pretty soon. Take, yeah, take. just raise the stakes. Raise the stakes. Let's stay with this non-conference uh, process, if you would, wow. going back to the SWAC. Bethune Cookman at Tennessee State. Sticking with you, Alan, what are your thoughts in terms of this matchup uh, between Bethune Cookman, the Wildcats, and the Tigers? Man, I, another over. I'm just saying, for, for the good of uh, uh, Tennessee State, I, I mm -hmm. sure hope that they can get a dub this week, but I just don't know. Um, but, you know, Bethune is, has had its struggles. You know, they've been in the hotel for the last couple of weeks due to Hurricane Ian coming through. And, uh, you know, our thoughts and prayers are with, with all those uh, students at Bethune-Cookman who are, had to go back into that virtual mode because of the damage done by the hurricane. But it's going to be tough for them. They've been basically living on the road for the last couple of weeks. And to go into a hostile environment at homecoming at yeah. Tennessee State, you know, I, I, got a, I got a feeling that Tennessee State is, is, is going to come out of this with a dub. Yeah. Charles, Tennessee State 0-4, did they get the first victory of the year? Yeah, I think uh, to touch on uh, what Alan was saying, I think living on the road over the past couple of weeks and, and you know, experiencing that sort of traumatic experience that you have with the hurricane coming through and they're being displaced, having to go back into the online mode, I think that has to take a toll on this Bethune-Cookman team. Uh, although I must say uh, their, their quarterback is playing tremendous. Uh, and, you know, I, I understand that uh, – Various uh, alumni groups have been taking care of Bethune Cookman up there in the Nashville area this past week. So, uh, yeah. shout out to those alumni groups, uh, Jackson State being one of them. But uh, Jalen Jones is playing tremendous for Bethune Cookman right now. But I think it's going to be a lot to overcome. I think uh, you'll get a lot of uh, Jimmy Rouse this weekend for Tennessee State, and they got to get this win on homecoming. I think a lot of that matchup is going to be health, health for both teams. Who is the healthier team? Yeah, who is the healthier quarterback? Yeah. Yeah, might decide what comes up in that matchup. Let's stick with you, Charles, and go into Montgomery, another homecoming matchup. We talked about a couple of these homecoming, Tennessee State homecoming, Morgan State homecoming, Alabama State homecoming. It's against Jackson State. Jackson State comes in uh, undefeated, 4-0, number one. Everybody has them, number one. Most team, most polls have them with uh, unanimous in terms of all the first-place votes. Um, mm -hmm. So they have showed and deserve to be there. What do you think about this matchup? 
Yeah, I was over at Jackson State today uh, with the analysts in film room, and we were just looking at uh, uh, all the various formations that Alabama State uh, has presented thus far this season. So I think Jackson State feels very confident about uh, what they're going to do in terms of trying to stop the run. And that is the first principle of Dennis Thurman, stop the run and make a team one-dimensional. And I think once Jackson State is able to do that, which they've proven thus far, uh, despite a couple big plays they've given up, uh, when they are in alignment and assignment correct, uh, they are able to stop you from running the game, running the ball, and then they can pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. So those are the things I look forward to in this uh, football game. And Alabama State's defense, uh, in terms of, what they have shown thus far, they keep things in front of them. I think Shador Sanders has an opportunity to kind of pick them apart, if you will, and matriculate the ball downfield like Hank Strand used to say. So I think Jackson State gets this win. Uh, they got a – I keep saying they have this chip on their shoulder despite being 4-0, and and that chip is pretty big. So they're looking forward to getting over Montgomery tomorrow. Let me try this again with you, Alan. This is a top-10 matchup. You know, we have Alabama State – at number eight, number one versus eight, they are at home. It is homecoming. You know, can can the Hornets somehow sting the Tigers? You know, they do say Swarm is one. I, I, I'm, I It's just too many dogs. It's too many dogs <laughs> over at Jackson State. Um, I don't think Coach Robertson has lined up his squad yet. Uh, so I just don't see how uh, Alabama State is going to run with Jackson State even for a half. Uh, I think Shadur Sanders this week strengthens his uh, candidacy to be in that final consideration for the Heisman. Uh, I see him putting up big numbers, um, and I think Jackson State is going to roll. I tried, Charles. I tried to sell it to him. I couldn't get it there. <laughs> Let's go to our other top ten matchup, and this is Southern coming to Prairie View. Staying with you, Allen, this matchup here. Southern comes in 2-2 two and two overall, 1-1 one and one in terms of the uh, conference race. Prairie View is 3-2. and two. Uh, three and zero in terms of the conference race. I have it as the number two, uh, Prairie View and the Panthers in terms of the football program against number ten Southern. So you got a top ten matchup between teams right there in Prairie View. Ticket sales for both of these games are high, if not sold out, depending on where you're looking at for the matchup. What do you think is going to take place uh, in this football game? Well, this one is personal. You know, we've got. Uh... You know, with Coach Dooley coming back, we got a couple of players that uh, transferred over to Southern uh, at the end of the last season. Uh, so this one is personal. And, you know, we've got a new nickname for our defense. It's called Death Row. So welcome to Death Row, baby. Um, I think our defense <laughs> is going to get after them. Nobody expected Prairie View's defensive line to be as strong as it has been. As you can remember, when we look back two games, we didn't allow – a third down conversion. Didn't allow a third down. We're not talking fourth down. We're talking third down. So if our defensive line can get the pressure on the quarterback and like like Charles said, turn them into a one-dimensional team, it's it's over. Uh, and I think if if on Prairie View's offense, if Conley can can stay in that pocket and you run that ball in the, in the first quarter and then you bring all the guys up in the box because we know what Coach Frederick's going to do. You're going to bring all the guys up in the box. Then that that – that tight end drag right across the middle is going to be open. Then they're going to bite for that. And then you start hitting them with that quarterback run. It's head or gut. You're getting shot. It's just head or gut. What you want? PV mm. and a big win. Mm. Big win. Nice. Mm. Charles. I said what I said. Mm. Prairie View comes in with a lot of confidence. You probably hadn't seen this type of confidence in Prairie View uh, since the 60s. Even the last time Southern came in, there, I think you had some Prairie View folks that believe. But now I think it's a lot different in terms of that. It'll be interesting just to see the confidence in terms of this program in a lot of ways. Um, what are your thoughts in terms of what's going home in this matchup, top 10 matchup? What do you see, Charles? Southern comes in the number two defense, the number two offense in the swag, going up against the number two defense in the swag. To me, this game comes down to the consistency of the quarterbacks, which Prashad McCray to get for Southern. Which Trazon kindly do you get for Prairie View? But I think the intriguing matchups is really the defensive lines of both teams. Uh, can Jason Dumas and friends stop Ahmad Antoine? Uh, can Prairie View's defensive line stop Jared Sims? And and the athleticism of both quarterbacks. So uh, this is a tough one, tough one to call. Two fan bases frothing at the mouth. And when you get all this going, 
I like to go with the home team. So I'm going to go with Prairie View on this. I think basketball season comes early for the Southern Jaguars. Oh, wow. Knocking them out. Quick it rapid fire as we up against it. Let me just give you these two nat- matchups. Just tell me um, who you're going with. You don't have to break it down. Grambling at Alabama AM. Charles, who you got? Alabama AM. Alabama, Alabama AM. Who you have? Alabama AM. Last one we have here. It is a robbery matchup. Valley is struggling 0 5. We've seen how strong Alcorn seems to be at 2 and 2. It is a matchup. They're on the road. Does that mean anything to you, Allen? Who you got? No, I think Alcorn rolls. Alcorn is looking forward to Prairie View matchup in a couple of weeks. Oh. Charles? Yeah, I think Alcorn rolls in this one. That running game uh, is just a little too strong for teams right now. That'll do it. We broke you down. We gave you a little extra, as I told you. We figured it just right so you get what I'm seeing as a huge week, week uh, number five in terms of these matchups. Charles, what did you have to say? Hey, Prairie View fan base, you, you better be ready this weekend. You got to get there early when the gates open. You got to match energy versus that Southern Jaguar energy uh, because that place is going to be electric this weekend. Looking forward to this weekend of games. It's going to be an electric atmosphere in Montgomery, electric atmosphere at Prairie View. This is October football. This is fun. Obviously, Charles Allen, last thing I'll talk about, the change in the athletic directorship. Um, in terms of what's going on there. Any thoughts uh, in terms of support for the interim coming in uh, in terms of taking over the AD position for Prairie View? Well, I think uh, Gardner's really uh, taking over a program that's not really in bad shape. There are some administrative things that really need to be lined up, and I think he's in, he's in a good position to be able to take care of that. And then you bring in a consultant to help him with some of the athletic side. Uh, I think I think – he, he's handed a program that's not in shambles. So um, I look forward to the search committee really doing a thorough job. Uh, I, I don't feel like they asked all the right questions when we had to hire uh, Dr. Reed, but uh, I think they get a redo here and the new president will get to select the new AD. So looking forward to some new blood. Uh, hopefully they uh, think a little bit outside the box because the game is different today than it was two years ago. So I hope they realize that when we search for that next athletic director, because there's a different skill set needed. Great point when you talk about that. And as you said, Mr. John Gardner, we're going to be there to support him. I know him as a colleague and a friend and as a administrator, he is certainly going to get some of those things you talked about that were off. Uh, to some degree with Dr. Reed. He's going to get that on the scale. So it'll be interesting to see how things move forward. Thank you for listening inside HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Watts, Charles Bishop, and the adjunct Alan Williams coming in here for 1876 Sports and Culture. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills inside HBC Sports Lab. With Mike Washington, Charles Bishop, every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 o'clock Central Standard Time. We'll be here Sunday morning at 9 to give you a breakdown of all the games we talked about. We'll give you a breakdown and tell you what happened, who may be the next people on the ledge, and who are going to be the real contenders separating themselves from those pretenders. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest in the news. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. That's D-R-K-E-N-Y-A-T-T-H-C-A-V-I-L. Inside HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you check out 1876 Sports and Culture. Like, subscribe to them as they're on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Follow all the ladies and gentlemen on the show. Go to YouTube and make sure you uh, save that as well. You know what's going on with the pregame show. They're going to continue to give you that live coverage. And as much has been talked about, you want to tune into that because this should be fascinating in terms of what's going on there. I just want to see what they got to say because this should be all that in a bag of trips. Obviously, on Wednesdays, you have the ONG Strike Zone. On Saturdays, you have Carlos Brown as he's going to give you some insight in Southern in this matchup. So it should be fascinating to see what that looks like um, uh, in terms of what goes on there. Obviously, Charles Edmond oftentimes shares the stage with him representing all corn and giving you some insight from that perspective. So a lot of news out there that you need to make sure that you're checking out, uh, including game time, as you have that on the show oftentimes, Brian, and AD uh, in terms of sports rap. 
Make sure you tune in and like, download my JBN, my BCSN. That'll do it for us. Dream big, continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Alan? Lecture. Dismissed.